California's Monterey Peninsula is peaceful, a perfect setting for golf. Today, the IndyCars invade. It's the last race of 95, a year of firsts. Four different drivers won for the first time in their careers. Firestone returned to IndyCar racing and won its first race in 21 years with Scott Pruitt at Michigan. Ford captured the first manufacturer's championship by virtue of its 11 wins. Honda was victorious for the first time in their IndyCar history, winning at Loudoun. For the first time since 85, nine different drivers have won races. 3,600 miles away from the first race at Miami and less than 200 miles remain. The PPG Cup awaits a new name. From the beautiful Laguna Seca Raceway, it's the final race of the PPG IndyCar World Series. The Toyota Grand Prix of Monterey featuring the Bank of America 300. Hello and welcome. I'm Paul Page, the final race of the IndyCar season, and this is the man where the spotlight rests. Jacques Villeneuve, you can wrap up the championship here. You must be eighth or better to do so. What does that do to your race? What does that do to the pressure? Well, there's a lot of pressure because we can lose or win the championship this weekend, uh, depending on what happened with Alan Sir Jr. Um, but it's gonna, the, the, the plan is going to depend on what happens in the race. If we can stay in the lead, that's the best way to keep out of trouble. It's better than to be in the middle of the pack and try to avoid uh, uh, anybody. And, uh, you know, when, if you're trying to take it easy, you're going to break a little earlier, and then you have the other guys fighting, then that's when something uh, stupid could happen. So uh, if we can stay in the lead, that's where we're going to try. So it's stay. really more dangerous to lay back and try and only be eighth. Yeah, if, you're in, if you can be in the lead, it's better to stay there. If, you, if you're in the middle of the pack, then uh, you still have to drive aggressively so, so you're not laying back too much, but you don't want to make any stupid moves. Well, Jack, we wish you the best today. Hopefully, we'll see you as a champion at the end. Now, there are other drivers here going to contest his positioning. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Well, Paul here in the front row alongside Villeneuve, Brian Herta, the third time this year that Brian has been in the front row. And, Brian, I know this provides a great opportunity. Villeneuve's been so tough all year long. But in your mind, what's the key now to get your first IndyCar victory today? Well, you know, I, th I think we got to really uh, keep our heads about us. And, uh, you know, Jock's got the championship to think about. So, uh, you know, maybe I can attack early. Maybe I can take some chances that he can't afford to. So we just got to kind of see how it plays out. If I get an opportunity, you know, we're going to have to go for it because, uh, you know, we're really out of the championship, so we're going to go flat out for that win. A lot of disappointments for this team this year, but they're hoping to finish on a big note today. Now, here's another interesting part of this combination. Joining Chip Ganassi this year, Joe Montana, one of the greatest ever to play in the NFL. Give us a quick assessment now of your rookie year being associated in IndyCar racing. Well, it's been a lot more than, than even I expected. I, <clears throat> I knew it was going to be a lot of fun, and, and uh, the best part about it was a lot more than, than, than I did expect. And, a lot, of, a lot of learning going on for me because I've been so close to it, both, you know, on the track and behind the, the scenes. So uh, it's been a tough year, but, you know, we, we got, we got some improving to do. We've had some tough breaks, like you said, but, hey, that's the way the things go in this sport, and uh, we'll look forward to a good year next year. Been a great addition to have you on the IndyCar circuit. We're looking forward to 96. Thank you, Joe Montana. He's the grand marshal of all of this today. Now, there are a lot of other stories. Jan Beek has, has got one of them. Well, Gary, starting in the third position today, and of course, coming off his best finish ever in an IndyCar race just last weekend in Vancouver. Now, this is just your best shot, you think, of winning one of these things? Yeah, I think we got a chance today, you know, I'll certainly push hard, try and beat uh, Jacques and the rest of the guys, but it's going to be a tough, long afternoon, I think. Jill DeFerrin starts on the inside of row two. Paul? Well, with 95 coming to an end, we look ahead to 1996 and some of the changes that may in fact occur there as we take a look at the starting field. They sit down on the front straightaway ready to go. We know, of course, that Jack heads off to Formula One after today. Teo Fabi remains with his Forsyth team and there's the very real possibility that he's going to be joined by Greg Moore, the Indy Lights champion. Paul Tracy, he goes back to Roger Penske, the exercise of the option of his contract occurring there. Andre Ribeiro, well, he stays right where he is at Tasman and will be joined possibly by Scott Goodyear. That should be a nice combination. Ari Leyendijk, chances are good that he may be at Arciero Wells. And Christian Fittipaldi, he heads off to Newman Haas to replace Paul Tracy. And speaking of Christian Fittipaldi, let's go to Gary Gerald. 
Paul, we've talked so many times about the new faces that have made this 95 season so very exciting. Without question, the man driving his final race for Derek Walker this year is one of them. Christian Fittipaldi here getting final instructions in the cockpit. He's going to try to wrap up Rookie of the Year honors today, but he's got a long way to go in this one. His work is really cut out for him. He's back here in the ninth row. But as we mentioned, final drive now for Derek Walker's team. Paul Newman incidentally came by just minutes ago, congratulated him. He'll be in the Newman Haas car next year. Paul? All right, Christian Fittipaldi waits, as does the rest of the starting field for the command. For the final time in 1995 to start the engines, Danny Sullivan recovering from his accident at the Michigan 500. The 88 champion here is the fellow who will deliver the order to send them into life. Gentlemen, start your engines. All right, cackle them, baby. Raul Boisel fires up his machine. The rest of the field all starting their cars, ready to go racing. 26 sit on the starting grid on the pit straight. Jack Villeneuve, he's the man of the focus. Of course, Allinger Jr. will try to carve up through this field, and we'll be back with a start after this. Toyota Atlantic is much more than an exciting race series. It's the road to Indy. Champions like Ray Hall, Andretti, and Sullivan have taken this very same route. Toyota is committed to the Toyota Atlantic Championship because we may not know where the next series champion will come from, but we know where he's headed. is brought to you by Toyota Motorsports. Our minds are always racing. By Bank of America, banking on America. Bank of America. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. We're moving even closer now to the start of the final race of the 1995 PPG IndyCar World Series here at Laguna Seca Raceway. And in the past few minutes, Derek Daly has come up with some information that could affect the outcome of the race. And Paul, it concerns tires and not which brand any car uses. But for some reason, the abrasive surface here at Laguna Seca seems to destroy the rear tires on imbalanced cars in as little as 10 or 12 laps. Now, two of the well-balanced cars have been Brian Herta and Jacques Villeneuve, even in the sunshine and on worn tires. That could bode very well for those two drivers this afternoon. Now, I want to show you the point standings right now at the top of the points order. And look in parentheses alongside Villeneuve and Al Unser Jr. Those are the points they would have if the current appeal would actually reverse the disqualification of Al Unser Jr. at Portland. It's kind of complicated, but Gary Gerald can make some sense of it for us. Paul, there's no question now that this appeal has cast a big cloud of uncertainty over this final race of this season, but I think a couple of simple things to remember might help make it an easier day for all race fans. Keep this in mind. Jacques Villeneuve finishes eighth or better today. Regardless of the outcome of the appeal, Jack wins the championship. Al Unser, however, if he finishes third or worse, he's eliminated from any championship consideration, depending what happens with the appeal. Now, the appeal process begins September 18th. The three-judge panel has been picked. They will hear the appeal that's been filed by Roger Penske, and then they will render a decision. But that's down the road. Junior, of course, is determined that he wants to keep the hopes alive as best he can today. He has to win this race. He's starting way back in 14th position. Nobody's ever won this race from that far back in the field. He's got a long way to go but then remember in the last four races he's won two he's finished second he's finished third he wants to keep that role going paul well, on the other hand let's hope it gets decided on the racetrack here now behind the ppg safety cars the field is rolling on the first warm-up lap and when we come back we'll look at how the field consists america's always been a country of inventors a nation of relentless tinkerers a land of improvisation Businesses start in garages. Hobbies turn into industries. And if you're Bank of America, you hold up your end of the job by making sure every business service is in place. Or when the next brainstorm hits in the middle of the night. Banking on America. Bank of America. Look. You know 
Goodyear Tires, everybody knows Goodyear Tires. But did you know that Goodyear retailers have lowered prices? An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passenger, light truck, and performance tires. It's true. And other sale prices start as low as $19.99. Believe it. Goodyear. We say they're the best tires in the world. And now you can save like never before. See your Goodyear retailer today. Because this sale ends soon. Whether your car is Strawberry Pearl Coat, Santa Fe Silver, or Candy Apple Red, a PPG certified collision repair shop uses premium paint and a palette of over 100,000 colors to precisely match your car's color. Whether it's Champagne Metallic, Emerald Green, or Banana Yellow, PPG Premium Paint, the right match for your car. As they continue to warm up, let's take a look at the starting grid here on the pole. Jacques Villeneuve, this is the sixth pole in his last nine races, and all have been new track records. Alongside is Brian Herta. He makes his third front row start in only his 22nd race. In row two, Jill DeFerrin. Second place finish last week in Vancouver was a career best. And Teo Fabi. He won the first IndyCar race in Laguna back in 83. In row three, Scott Pruitt, the Michigan 500 winner. And Mauricio Guzman. He's tied with Bill Noob for the most times running at the finish of a race. In row four, it's Jimmy Vassar. He scored the second highest number of points on natural road courses this year. And Paul Tracy, the winner of the last two races here at Laguna Seca in his last start for Newman Haas. Row five, Andre Ribeiro. His best finish on a road course was fourth at Elkhart Lake. And Parker Johnstone. This is his best ever start on a road course. In the sixth row, it's Bobby Rahal. He won four in a row here. And Michael Andretti, who led every lap on his way to wins in 91 and 92. In row seven, Raul Boisel. And Al Unser Jr., who must finish third or better to defend his PPG title. In row eight, Adrian Fernandez and Robbie Gordon. In row nine, Christian Fittipaldi and Stefan Johansson. The tenth row, Juan Manuel Fangio and Emerson Fittipaldi. The eleventh row, Frederick Eckblum and Carlos Guerrero. In row 12, Marco Greco and Alessandro Zampedri. And the 13th row, Mimo Chiatarella and Hiro Matsushita. So that's the way they line up here, as now behind the single Toyota PPG pace car, they line up. Here is the race analysis, 84 laps. Villeneuve needs that eighth or better if he's going to clinch the PPG Cup championship. Fuel stops, 24th lap. And then, depending on yellows, we'll see how it goes. Today's field, there's the lineup of chassis and engines. And the circuit here at Laguna Seca is magnificent. Seven-story elevation difference. And where can you pass here? Well, fortunately, there are a number of good passing zones, but I'll tell you what, the competition is always close here. And where can you get in trouble? Now we've got a whole group of places, and they're all the same as the passing zones. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Team we haven't heard much from this weekend, Newman Haas. Consider their, their drivers have done in the last four years. Tracy winning at the last two, Michael Andretti winning at the two years before. They start 8th and 12th today, but Michael told me after the morning warm-up session, they think they found the combination to get the car handling the way they want it. He's very optimistic, even though he's starting at mid-pack. Jan? Just a couple of quick points here. First of all, Derek talked about the tires, potential problems here. Think of the chassis that's kindest on the tires. A lot of people think it's the Penske chassis. Also, a lot of crew chiefs up and down pit road already calling their drivers saying, watch out for that tur first turn. It can be notorious here at Laguna Seca. Paul? All right, behind that beautiful yellow Toyota pace car, Derek Daly, we're looking at a wave of changing age. Youth is really here. The youth movement in IndyCar racing. Consider this fact. The front row of the grid today is 24 and a half years of age on average. Two years ago, Emerson and Paul Tracy were on the front row. That was an average of 35 years of age. And just five years ago, the average age was 45 years of age when Mario and Danny Sullivan started on the front row of the grid. So youth and bravery are to the forefront here at IndyCar Racing. They climb the hill now. This is up to the top of the elevation at 
this beautiful racetrack here right on the edge of the former Fort Ford. And there is the corkscrew, a sudden dip, a turn to the left, and downhill. It's like a roller coaster as you head down. And in competition, it's magnificent. There are four former Laguna winners in today's field. Tail Bobby, Bobby Rahal, Michael Andretti, and Paul Tracy. Now they come sweeping down the hill. It's a very short lead from the final turn to the green flag as they turn onto the pit state. So they're going to try to assemble as best they can before the corner. And of course, the starter will be watching them so very carefully. Jack Bell now takes them off the corner. The revs come up. And here we go. The final race of the season is underway. Belliot takes him down into the first corner. DeFerrin tucks in very close. Herder works to the outside, as does Bobby. Down through the first corner. It's still Villeneuve. Bobby tries to make a move to the inside. Villeneuve runs all the way to the edge of the course. One car spinning at the back of the field. Not a factor. Gets off safely. Should be able to get back on. That might have been one of the best starts we've Robbie seen. It's Robbie Gordon to continue his disastrous weekend here. Started all the way back in 16th. And look at the buildup on that rear tire. So soft that rubber just sucks up the stones and the gravel offline. Apparently nudge there reporting by Adrian Fernandez. Now to the top of the hill as Villeneuve begins to pull out a bit of an advantage over second place. Brian Herta and in third place as we're going yellow. They're going to go to a full course yellow. Part of their concern has been throughout the weekend when a car gets off in some of those critical areas, they'll spray so much rock and sand on the track that it's dangerous for everyone behind. So now the front of the field slows down at the end of the first lap. And I began to mention that was one of the best starts we have seen on a road course because they were two by two, absolutely in tandem in a perfect drag race all the way down. So Brian Herta began to challenge Jacques Villeneuve. We can have a look at it in replay as Robbie Gordon makes his way back on slowly. He gets tapped by Fernandez. That's Fernandez off the road. No, everything's okay. If you need some tires, check those tires out. Derek Walker talking with his driver, Robbie Gordon. Another look at this situation that brought out a full course yellow. He tries to go outside Fernandez. Oh, he gets in trouble. And there's the impact. Two cars trying to go on the one small piece of ground and an early time to make an exit, even if you have a badly difficult handling car as Robbie Gordon has had here all weekend. So Robbie Gordon gets it around and gets it back on the track. We're full course yellow at the conclusion of the first lap. We'll be back. When traffic congestion changes, the threats to your car's engine change. That's why Quaker State has engineered intelligent oil. Oil that senses the changing threats in your engine and adapts its own molecular structure for continuous protection. So whenever the driving conditions change, so does Quaker State, the intelligent oil for longer engine life. Now get up to 660 back by mail when you buy a case of Quaker State or up to 275 back by mail when you buy five quarts. And then Mauricio Guzman just ahead, leading the race is Jack Villeneuve. That's, of course, the position that he needs if he intends to take home the IndyCar Championship as the youngest ever to take it. And the first from 
Canada. And every one of these drivers knows how they must protect the four black boots that contact themselves to the road because that has been the topical point here, particularly after the warm-up this morning. And the two leading cars are the two of the best handling cars throughout the morning warm-up this morning. Now moving back to Paul Tracy. Paul Tracy and Scott Pruitt. Sixth and seventh. Let's go on board with Paul Tracy. Back, Jill DeFerrin got around Brian Herta for second place. Now Bobby moves on Herta. Bobby comes to the inside. Apparently something wrong there with Herta's car. We'll keep an eye on board here. Boy, look at the brakes lock up on DeFerrin just ahead. Brian Hurt is in trouble here because three places he's lost in less than two corners. Jan Beekes, you're down there? Yes, Derek. When he came by the front straightaway, you could hear that he had a bad misfire with that forward power plant. So it's either electrical. This early in the race, it wouldn't be a broken header, so it must be electrical problems for Brian Herta. We'll keep an eye on Brian Herta. Too bad that he didn't recognize that during that yellow. He might have been able to pop in and out with a quick change of electronics. Back on board, Paul Tracy. Just ahead, sixth place, Scott Pruitt. And just ahead of him is Brian Herta. He is a lame duck. He just went by our commentary booth here, and the engine sounds terrible. In fact, Yana does sound like a broken header, very similar to the problem I think Jimmy Vassar had last weekend. There he goes, another pass. He's going to have to make a pit stop. He's got no choice. Gary Terrell, do you have a further update on Brian? Just got a quick word with Chip Ganassi, and yes, uh, it relates to the motor. They don't know if it's electronic specifically, not a header. They are going to bring him in. The crew is over the wall awaiting him now. Oh, such disappointment. This team has had so many of these days where they've just been dogged by tough luck, Paul. Well, he's on the way to you now. Just turned on to the pit road, Gary. There's Brian Herta. come off they'll of course reach for the electronics it's assuming that they don't see anything when they pull the engine calling we can listen for the radio too parker johnstone quick off down in the second turn the hairpin at the end of the long pit straight had terrible the trouble this morning in the morning warm-up went to the line thinking he's going to have a lot of trouble with boost and he's obviously stalled the engine here so this may bring out a yellow flag i don't know what benefit it will be to, to brian Herter because that engine problem sounded Way, way too difficult to deal with in just a couple of seconds here. But Brian Herta didn't get his nickname, High Speed Herta, for nothing. It was a winner here in the Indy Lights series. And they're going to get Parker Johnstone underway without having to go to a full course yellow. So that'll keep the track full green condition. IndyCar safety team does a spectacular job. We talk about all the marvelous volunteers as well, both from the uh, marshals, the flag marshals, and folks from the SCCA, the San Francisco region up here, and the IndyCar volunteers, as there's a large group of those as well. Takes literally thousands to put any IndyCar race on, and you really have to thank them for the marvelous job they've done this year. And they even work on announcers, as I know, because of what happened to me yesterday morning, so it's thanks to the people down there to put me back in shape. Believe it or not, I ended up on a stretcher yesterday morning, and the people down at uh, the medical center and the Tony Lama Human Performance Center with Don Andrews got the nerve trapped out of the way, and I was back in business. Allinger Jr. moving on Jimmy Vassar. Derek Daly apparently spent too much time at an Irish pub in the area. What was, well, never mind. Jan Bikas. We had a chance to check in in Parker Johnstone's pit as he goes by the front straightaway with Doug Peterson. Asked him what happened. He said simply, he just lost it. Spun on his own. Paul? All right, we continue to watch the move of Al Unser Jr. He is the kind of driver that does move forward very quickly, and that's absolutely the formula he needs today. Started 14th, now running 10th, up four positions. What he needs is first place. Michael Andretti working on Ribeiro. There's little Al lining up behind Ray Hall. During our qualifying show yesterday, we asked Al Jr. what he lacked, and he simply said speed in qualifying. But now we're in a racing mode, which is totally different. And this Penske chassis, as Jan Bikas alluded to earlier, seems to have tire management down a little bit better than some of the other teams. And Al Jr. has enjoyed that type of race consistency. And of course, he's used it to his benefit to win so many races this year. And now, 
He may be a championship contender, but he's going to need, need a lot of help, maybe from yellow flags. Allinger Jr., his best finish, of course, his wins at Long Beach, Mid-Ohio, and last week at Vancouver. Tied for the most wins among active drivers with Michael, and if he wins today, he'll tie with Jack for the most wins of the season. That could figure into the way the championship is determined because that's one of the tiebreakers. And the team will tell you that they were mentally derailed after that disqualification at Portland, but Alonso Jr. has pulled it all back together to become a contender, whereas this man, really his season fell apart, Paul. Eighth place, Michael Andretti has not been able to convert most laps led and pulls into wins this year. He chases Andre Ribeiro right now. Start at 12th. Bad when you start back at the pack. Listen to the throttle. Suffered oversteer all weekend here. Back end sliding way too much. This is turn five, 80 miles an hour at the apex. Right there, watch the climb uphill. Gets faster. 115 miles an hour before he gets on the brake. And now it goes even further uphill. Seven stories high. There's a braking zone up here, but he's not close enough. Famous corkscrew roller coaster plunge downhill, trying to catch Ribeiro. Next passing zone is not this corner, but the one after it. It's down to the hairpin, slowest corner. Can he get down the inside? Too far behind. Second gear, started all over again. So Michael Andretti continues to work on Andre Ribeiro, though he has moved up four positions himself since the start of this race and currently runs in eighth place. The race is still led by Jack Villeneuve. He stays there. He has a championship. You never outgrow your need to learn. That's why Jones Intercable offers an exciting variety of informational and educational programming for people of all ages. Cable television is an investment that only gets better with time. Subscribe now for a special installation price of $9.95, and you'll enjoy 49 exciting channels for only $24.43 per month. Call today. You have to see it to believe it. Automania, Antelope Valley's home of Automobilia. What's Automobilia? Everything and anything to do with cars. Remember Hot Wheels? Automania's got them. Plus posters, die casts, t-shirts and hats, NASCAR, Indy, Formula One, everything for racing fans, plus plenty for cruisers. All the cool stuff they love. Test your skill on Automania's computerized slot car track. Open Monday through Saturday. If you're crazy about cars and racing, then you'll be in the winner's circle at Automania. 50th Street West and M and Quartz Hill. Automania. Zampedri have spun in a very precarious position just off of turn 11 and as the rest of the field comes by safely now they have though gone to a full course yellow so they'll line the field up once again behind the PPG pace car let's go to Gary Gerald Chip Ganassi this day started with such great promise this has got to be the most frustrating thing an owner can go through what's the problem well one you know again we have some engine problem it's really not related to any of my mechanics and I've just really had enough of this I mean all season long we've been fighting these engine gremlins and uh, once again today it's caught us you know last week Vancouver with the other car that was the first lap thing I mean uh, Somebody's got to do some work to get these engines straightened out. Thank you, Chip. Obviously a very frustrated man here. They fired Herter's engine. He's hoping to get back out, but he's lost so many laps. Let's go to Jan. Well, Gary, from a frustrated owner to a very calculated one. Behind me, Roger Penske has been talking to Alexander Jr., and he's trying to get him to be cautious. Take your time. Telling him where he wants him to be on the fuel. They think they're A-OK -okay here, and of course, just like Derek said, this full course yell will really help them. Paul? Al Unser Jr. and Roger Penske, two very calculating drivers. And Adrian Fernandez, who had contact up in the corkscrew, has to do a change of nose here. So the four course, full course yellow is working to his advantage. Now this year, one of the most famous sports personalities joined forces with Chip Ganassi. 
And earlier today, three-time Super Bowl MVP Joe Montana took the Bank of America lap of honor in a 1995 Toyota Supra. Crowd loved that. It goes by the lofty title, The American Dream. But it's also known as the fixer-upper with one and a half baths. Or the new wagon with room for ten. On occasion, it goes by the name, the orthodontist said braces, or both. So if you're Bank of America, you stand by to help with the money. No matter what the dream's called. Even when it answers to Jenny, college freshman, in class of 2005. Banking on America. Bank of America. Look. You know Goodyear Tires. Everybody knows Goodyear Tires. But did you know that Goodyear retailers have lowered prices? An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passengers. Light truck and performance tires. It's true. And other sale prices start as low as $19.99. Believe it. Goodyear. We say they're the best tires in the world. And now you can save like never before. See your Goodyear retailer today. Because this sale ends soon. Toyota has won more off-road championships than anyone. But winning isn't everything. Building better trucks is. So after every race, we take our trucks apart, piece by piece. We look for ways to make them even more powerful, even more durable. Because whether we're building a one-of-a-kind racing machine or your one and only truck, at Toyota, our minds are always racing. So we are still under full course yellow. Uh, the Takati team, the Gallus Racing, they're working on Adrian Fernandez front nose. He got himself in trouble here. We'll take a look at uh, what caused this situation. It was up in the corkscrew. Whoa, he just missed it. And that was a classic case of understeer. You saw his wheels. Watch the front wheels. Turned, turned, plows straight on. When you push like that, that's what you hear the driver's term as push or understeer. He's lucky he didn't collect that tire wall and do a lot more damage. All right, so here is the running order after nine of the 84 laps with uh, the significant change being the Brian Herta removal from second position. And the Farron now had, in fact, before the yellow, been closing right up on the back of Jack Villeneuve. There is the entire order for you. And, of course, you can see by this, too, that Robbie Gordon continues to function all right after that off course early on another situation involving Adrian Fernandez. Here we are, green once again. And to make this scenario very interesting, Gilles de Ferran on lap seven set the fastest lap of the race. So right now, he has the fastest car out there. He may be a challenger to Villeneuve. But remember what Ganassi said earlier on, or what Brian Herta said, Villeneuve cannot take the type of chances that other, other drivers can. Gary, what do you think? Is Villeneuve in trouble? Well, we just checked with Barry Green, and they're a little bit concerned. Not a major problem, but the car has gone loose. He's got the oversteer situation, and so he's got a bit of a handful. And he said, it's nothing, though, that we think we can, uh, can't live with. They'll try to make an adjustment on his scheduled pit stop probably sometime after lap 24, between 24 and 29. Up to the top of the corkscrew, Jan Vegas. Yes. Ah, Paul, when you had that great example that Derek described, the understeer that Adrian Fernandez had, and now we're hearing about oversteer, it turns out that almost all the crews, the majority of those, are calling in on their radio communication saying the cars are getting loose. So watch for that here in the early stages of what we might call phase two here before the first round of pit stops. Paul? All right, watching Jack Villeneuve. Now DeFerrin not making that much headway on him. Jan, unfortunately, you couldn't see the pictures, but that was not normal understeer that we saw with <laughs> Fernandez. That was totally out of control understeer that was exaggerated when he went off onto the gravel trap. Now DeFerrin is able to close just a bit. As we watch this battle, Derek Daly, the comments by Chip Ganassi criticizing his engine program. Well, that was interesting to me because we have to remember the Newman Haas team with Michael Andretti and Tracy and the Ganassi team enjoy the Ford factory backing. So they should have all the resources they need to have the best of Ford engines. So that may just G Ford up a little bit to make sure those boys don't have those type of troubles in the future. Titus battle on the race course. Andretti, Ray Hall, Unger Jr., 8th, 9th, and 10th. You ride with Ray Hall. 
remember that little Al trying to pass Ray Hall at Toronto got in trouble and crashed down in the first turn. Downhill run. 115 miles an hour. That corner is all going to be different next year. This will not be the racetrack. They're going to redesign this facility, spending a lot of money to update this great racetrack here at Laguna Seca. Lengthen the pits. Pit boxes will be longer. They can start more cars. Oh, oh look runs, at the braking. Runs through the tire smoke here. Jr. sitting right on the back end. As a matter of fact, the folks here at Laguna Seca are going to make well over a million dollars in improvements to this track. And especially part of the moving to that final turn is going to lengthen the pit lane. And that will allow them to start more cars because that's actually what limits the number of cars you can start here is how long your pit lane is. You don't want to jam them in. Remember, we've had some problems here in the past. Remember uh, Johansson's situation a year ago? pictures here this uphill run and there's the corkscrew Woohoo! and television pictures do not even do it justice it is literally a plunge over the side in a straight sheer drop down and in the early laps when you come here for the very first time it is by far and away the most dramatic series of corners any driver has ever faced Alanser Jr. continues to chase Ray Hall in 10th place John Beacus Yes, and we've been listening to what Roger Penske has been coaching him along the way. And interestingly enough, they just told him to lean down the engine. They were at 94%. Now they're down to 92%. It'll be interesting to see if that shows on the track. Of course, that will take horsepower away from the machine, but it'll save fuel. So they're saving fuel. Obviously, it has to do with their pit strategy. I wonder if he'll still close in on that battle, Paul. 84 laps of scheduled distance, 14 laps complete. We've had two yellow flags, full course yellow during that period of time. Al Unser Jr. continues to work on Ray Hall. And of course, when you lean the fuel down, sometimes the decision is made because he's stuck behind Ray Hall. So if he's not able to go as fast as his car can run, if he is going to be behind Ray Hall, why not turn the fuel mixture down, put less fuel into the engine? You don't need the extra horsepower because you're stuck behind somebody. You can save the fuel for later. When you're clear on the racetrack by yourself, dump the fuel in, make more horsepower horsepower and go faster and leaning the engine down now is, is not mechanical like it used to be where you could really turn it too far it's all all chip control all electronic and the telemetry in the pit lane can tell the mechanics and the engineers from mercedes-benz if he's done it correctly or not if not they radio back to him or in fact in penske's case they have actually a little message board digital message board on the steering wheels should the radio system not work properly you can see here, Paul, he's clearly faster than Ray Hall, but he can't find a way around. Ray Hall is using a slightly defensive line, as he is entitled to do. This is a fight for position, not anything else. We're also seeing a bit of uh, buildup off the edge of the line as these soft tires start to shed the rubber. And that, of course, makes it a little more precarious for little Al to make one of those daring moves when he will dive inside a corner. Not quite as safe here. See all that sand off line. Regularly you'll see when the cars run right to the edge, it actually sucks some of the dust and sand onto the racetrack. So the car following has to run over it. That is why sometimes you get this mishandling imbalance on these racing cars, which makes this track, as Jimmy Vassar told me this morning, the most difficult track IndyCars race on to get consistency. So the fight continues back here with Bobby Rahal and Al Anser Jr. for ninth, while Jack continues to be the leader of the race, traced by DeFerrin. Speed Gear presents its latest catalog of officially licensed racing merchandise. Choose from the top names in Formula One and IndyCar, Benetton, Williams Renault, Newman Haas, and Rahal Hogan. Drivers including Senna, Schumacher, and Hill, plus Andretti, Tracy, and Gordon. Speed Gear has everything from t-shirts, hats, and jackets to scale models, videos, and hundreds of accessories. Call 1-800-777-1847 for your free catalog from Speed Gear. You could run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365.
365 days a year and still not get as fit as you'd become by working out a few minutes a week on the Soloflex muscle machine. Hi, I'm Tina. This is my baby. I feed her, nurture her, and I guide her. Believe me. Push your At 130 miles an hour when she starts to whine, I'm a real mother. Robbie Gordon into the pits, and it is unscheduled. Jan Bikas is there. We'll also listen to the radio, Jan. Ready, guys. Yes, they're planning on making a change okay, up at the go, front go. wing. They were trying to get him, the car, to be a little bit tighter. That was a very, very quick stop. This crew is excited. They know they've lost some time in the early laps, but they're hoping they can make that up, Paul. Well, listen carefully now as Derek Walker talks to his driver gets him back on the staff. That came off of Adrian Fernandez's car as he came sweeping down through the corkscrew. And now two separate cars have run over it. And that can damage tires oh, big time. Oh, absolutely. Nothing cuts tires down worse than sharp-edged carbon fiber, which is what that looked like. So Adrian Fernandez, in the course of 18 laps, has now had three separate incidents here at Laguna. He's a busy boy today remains at the front of the field. One, two, three. Villeneuve, Deferrin, Teo Fabi, Gary Gerald. Crew telling Jack Villeneuve that he's doing very nicely now. He said no mistakes. That's what they're telling Jack. No mistakes. They just keep pounding the point home. We check with Jim Hall and Gilles Deferrin. They love the way their car is working. Nice balance. And he says Gilles hasn't said a word to me thus far. Quiet as can be. Focused in that cockpit. Doing a heck of a job. You know what I find interesting though, Derek? They're running laps of 75 seconds a lap and that's four to five seconds off of the qualifying pace and from Vilna's point of view it's almost six seconds off his qualifying pace so although these three drivers are dominating and controlling the pace here they're way off the ideal performance these cars can come up with and I can only tell you it's because the tires begin to give up and they have to be very very careful consistency is what you need to win races not huge speed for one lap and then straight to the pits Villeneuve, Deferrin, Teo Fabi, then Mauricio Guzelman and Scott Pruitt, the top five. There's Paul Tracy, sixth position as he climbs the hill. Paul thought he drove the wheels off this thing. Mind you, I suppose he'd say that anyway, no matter how good or bad he was. But interestingly enough, he starts his test program, and extensive it is with the Penske team in two weeks' time. Tells me before the end of... October and November, he will have more test time than he has had all this season. So Tracy will be a busy boy towards the end of this season. If you try and identify some of the problems at Penske Racing this year, is the fact that Paul Tracy was not there to test part of it? It's hard to tell. I mean, Tracy is known and recognized as a very good test driver. He is also an extremely fast talent, which tends to push your teammates. But, you know, racing has a habit of going in cycles. One team will not dominate on a regular basis. And we know, and you know, Paul, from, from past history, Roger Penske's teams go in that cycle also, and they will be back. And Tracy hopes they'll be back with him at the top because he would like to win the IndyCar Championship. There comes Bobby Ray Hall with Al Hunter Jr. still stuck right to the back end of his car, and then Jimmy Vassar runs in 11. Al Hunter Jr. in a fuel conserve mode now, apparently, as he stays lined up behind Ray Hall because he doesn't have enough of an edge to go ahead and force his way past, so there's no sense in trying lap after lap and wasting the fuel. You'll get some fresh tires here very shortly. And there's that defensive line, Paul, we saw under braking by Ray Hall. You just move the car offline, maybe one car width, and that means the driver that's maybe thinking of making an attempt down the inside suddenly says, no, there is not enough room to do it. I saw a great quote by Ray Hall after Friday. He says, I'm happy to be the fastest ball driver here. And then he realized, uh-uh, no, Fabi has that honor. 
Well, I was talking to him about that, and, and he said, here's Al Enzer Jr. as he tries the move to the inside. Now he just lets him know he's there. Little warning for the top of the hill, don't you think? Oh, you tempt me, and I'll poke my nose down, is what Al Jr. says. He is so good in the braking zones. The Penske car is very stable under braking. Perhaps he sees a weak spot now with Ray Hall, and he may pounce. We're on lap 20. Pit stops will be coming up shortly. Yeah, but did you just see that line that Ray Hall used kind of moved over about a full lane on his approach into the top of the corkscrew. Here's another decisive point. And no, Al Enzer Jr. doesn't have an opportunity to do it. Four-time winner here, four years in a row, starting in 1984, Bobby Ray Hall. The, I asked him about that quote, you know, the fastest bald guy here, and he said, well, I didn't really say that. I said I was the fastest Lola, the fastest Mercedes, and... Uh, then somebody on the crew said, and the fastest bald guy, oh, no, no, Teo's faster than you are. Well, he's the second fastest bald guy at the moment because Teo Fabi is running third and Ray Hall is ninth. And by the way, least we be politically incorrect, at least one of us in the booth has that description and another one is well on the way. <laughs> yeah, lightweight. Christian Fittipaldi hit the pitch. He was 17th at the start, moved up to 12th and then made a premature pit stop just a few laps ago. You know, I don't believe Al Jr. thinks he has the room, but he thinks he's about to force the issue here. But you can see Ray Hall. He didn't win those four races in a row for no good reason. He understands every line around here. That piece of debris, you saw that? Still, still on the racetrack. It's offline, though, therefore we don't need to go pick it up. But look at Junior. He's fast off the corners. That gives him the run to the braking zones to so maybe attempt a run down the inside. And they are closing on Michael Andretti. They're running a bit faster than Michael and closing in on him. Of course, a battle always slows you down a little bit. Use those offline approaches to try and protect position. See again the tight line by Junior under power, under power. It lines him up for the braking zone. Can't make it, but he's quick off the exit. Oh, he's loose. He's loose. You said that this is an area of the course that it's very difficult to balance the car in. Yes, indeed. And this is also the area where a lot of the cars drag sand and dirt onto the racing line. But this is what Junior likes. The run up the hill and have a little look down the inside, but he's too far behind. Vassar still hanging on behind him in 11th place. Climbing to the top of the hill now, up the top of the corkscrew. Al Unser Jr. looks to the inside, but is way too far back to make a move there. So Al Unser Jr. continues to work at Bobby Rahal. He can make the move just about any time. 21 laps of the 84 lap scheduled distance are complete, and Jack Villeneuve, the pole setter, has led from the start. Introducing the Toyota T100 Extra Cab. Its new 190 horsepower V6 actually outperforms V8s. It's big and spacious, yet amazingly maneuverable. And it's extremely rugged, yet incredibly refined. The new T100 Extra Cab. It's the Toyota of big trucks. Just how long does a car battery last? About this much time is put into most batteries. But AC Delco puts in more time, so our batteries last over 20% longer. Well, now there's the new Delco Freedom 84, our longest-lasting battery ever. We put in seven years of guaranteed starts, making it the granddaddy of all batteries. Hey, my watch! <laughs> It has a four-wheel independent suspension system designed to hug the corners and fly down the straightaways. It has a gleaming red finish, durable enough to withstand vigorous bumping. It seats one comfortably. And although this vehicle will never win any speed races, it will help you come out ahead week after week in the checkout lane. The girl who was too tall. The girl who could run faster than the boys. The pretty girl who never wanted to be a cheerleader. The girl who turned her back on the in crowd. Has risen above the rest. Look at Roger Penske as he holds Alan Jr. in the pits, drops his hand, sends him out. 
They decided to bring him in on the 24th lap, just as the fuel window was beginning to open. I would say just to get him out from behind the battle with Ray Hall. So Al Unser Jr. has just completed a stop. That breaks off the battle with Bobby Rahal. He is therefore the first of the regulars to come in just as the fuel window opens on lap 24. Jack Villeneuve is still the leader, being chased by DeFerrin, then Teo Fabi, Mauricio Guzman, and Scott Pruitt. Interesting strategy here by Roger Penske. Yes, and that was a good example of a typical Penske move. Realizes losing too much time behind Rahal, couldn't make the pass. Get him into the pit lane, then get him out and run by and said, look at DeFerrin oh, under braking. Gets it sideways, locking up those rears. And Mauricio Guzman, I think, having a stellar day, considering he had a huge crash when he had a component failure yesterday, missed the last qualifying session. This car here was his spare car. They rebuilt it around all the good bits left from the crash car. He is having a good day running for That must have been tough on him, sitting through that final qualifying session, no he had no car available and wondering how bad he was going to suffer in qualifying position. Fortunately, he didn't drop all that much. The time that he set on Friday was a sufficient time, and he started in the third row. Has yet to win in an IndyCar race, but I'll tell you what, his team packed west with Mauricio Big Mo, they call him at the wheel, has had a fine season in terms of DNFs. They've really been tracking very cleanly. You may be curious to know what Hollywood is. It's got nothing to do with Hollywood. In fact, it's a brand of cigarettes that is very popular in South America. There's really turn one. It's an extension of the pit straight. To a slower car, it's barely there. To an Indy car, it's pretty tough. Then down to a hairpin. Here's Michael Andretti. As he makes his first stop of the day, he comes in from eighth position. He was able to move up four spots on the start, but then got stuck behind Bobby Rahal and Al Unser Jr. and has not been able to move up since then. Let's go to Gary. Big change on the handling characteristics. Two full turns that appeared on both sides of the front wing. And Michael, of course, now long gone. He's hoping that he can improve on the handling characteristics. He was loose like so many others. So everybody fighting exactly the situation that you suggested at starting was going to be the problem here. Yes, indeed. And loose condition, e e even without the tire unusual characteristic that we have this weekend this Laguna Seca race track has a history of making Indy cars go loose but we saw that mechanic wind the screw out on that front wing that is taking downforce off these cars off the front wings first second third on the pit straight climbing the hill oh what a great view this is there's that first turn this is turn two in the uh, pit access road. What a great qualifying battle this was, Paul. Remember yesterday's qualifying? Spectacular. Back and forth to Farron, Herta, Bobby, finally Villeneuve. And most of that in the last 60 seconds. And now you see Villeneuve has track position. Look how quick Fabi is up behind. Jill DeFerrin. DeFerrin was slow through there. Fabi, this is outside our commentary box. That's where they drift up close to the sand. And here's the uphill run, the first of the uphill runs. 100 miles an hour at the apex there. Villeneuve has breathing room in these medium speed corners. This is 5 6 in the uphill run to the carousel. Bobby Rahal hit the pits for his first stop of the day, Gary. Routine all the way and nicely done. 12.6 seconds for a fresh set of good years and a full complement of fuel. So Rahal stop number one. Al Enter Jr. has been there. Jimmy Vassar has been into the pits, as has Michael Andretti. And the times are dropping off. Villeneuve is now seven seconds off his qualifying time, and the people behind him are obviously suffering just as much. They are also running slow. Well, they're now reporting that Jack Villeneuve should be in the pits any time now. We'll hang here and see exactly what he plans on doing. Originally, they were talking about making it all the way to lap 30, but the report now is, let's come in next time, which would be at the end 
end of lap 28. And you can see Teferin is loose. When he exits these corners, he's got a handful of steering trying to steer this car and keep it straight. But I can only presume that Fabi has a similar, ha similar handling characteristic and Vilnov, who's not being caught, is grappling also with the loose car. We had that radio report earlier. All right, so tactically, what do you do now if you're DeFerrin or Fabi? You follow him into the pits? Oh, you follow him. Yes, you do if you can. Ford engine, Ford engine, Ford engine. Three, no, Mercedes in the middle of two Fords. So let's see, of course, the question is, I'm sorry, Paul, you, you asked. No, with the engine manufacturers, they will run as long as they can. The risk is, if Villeneuve gets in and suddenly he runs four or five seconds a lot faster, then you may too, lose too much time. All right, he is in the first pit. Gary's there to watch. He sneaks around the corner with a clear shot. Hits the marks perfectly. His final drive for Team Green before going to the International Formula One Series. Turns up front on the wings again. Dramatic changes. Will they go for the full load of fuel? Looks like it. Rolling 14.3 seconds. That's Barry Green as he turns to watch his car head onto the track. Of course, Jill DeFerrin took over the lead, followed by Teo Fabi, Pruitt, Tracy, and Jack Villeneuve in the pit lane came up in fifth position. It's DeFerrin's first time to lead an IndyCar race since mid-Ohio. Jan Bikas? Well, Paul, that's some interesting strategy because generally when you're running in second place that close, you follow the leader in when he makes a pit stop. But Jim Hall deciding now this time is for the time for Gilles DeFerrin to come in to make his stop. He'll be in here very shortly. So do you think, in fact, that was a conscious decision, Jan, to, to not, boy, he's, I gotta tell you, DeFerrin is really loose as he came over the top of the corkscrew. A conscious decision, or maybe Jack just pulled off the edge too quickly? No, they knew because they saw Barry Green's crew roll out, but I think the reason being that these crews are right next to each other, and this will give Gilles DeFerrin a straighter shot in here. They're hoping they can make very quick service. As a matter of fact, here he comes. He stops it on the marks, and in fact, he did have a nice straight run behind him. Many other people always pointing down. That's an interesting scenario. That is because he wants a change in the wing. We checked there was a full turn. Wait, he's starting to pull away a little too early. 10.6 seconds, still the Barrett underway. Turn on the right front wing. And here comes Jack Villeneuve off of the last corner. But it doesn't look like he's going to catch him. It looks like the Farron's going to come up to full speed. Of course, you saw that uh, Tail Fabi also came in. And the Farron does get out ahead of him. And, and Fabi's coming down the hill alongside Tracy. Tracy knows how valuable track position is, and Fabi forces the issue. He's down the inside, doesn't quite get the move. Tracy doesn't quite pull it off. What a great pit stop by Jim Hall's crew to get DeFerrin in and out. Nothing like track position. DeFerrin already has the fastest lap of the race. Now he has the lead. Now he has control. I got to tell you, it surprises me that DeFerrin was able to beat Villeneuve. Very interesting maneuver. Keeps the lead. America's always been a country of inventors. A nation of relentless tinkerers. A land of improvisation. Businesses start in garages. Hobbies turn into industries. And if you're Bank of America, you hold up your end of the job by making sure every business service is in place. For when the next brainstorm hits in the middle of the night. Banking on America. Bank of America. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure Platinum Center electrode that's heat-fused for an airtight seal. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. Genuine draft Bobby Ray Hall IndyCar. Awesome. When opened up. Gilda Farron has the lead here at Laguna Seca, being chased by Jack Villeneuve. Uh, 
10 second stop very quick you wonder if they didn't uh, short the fuel load a little bit and we're just watching up track and as soon as they saw Villeneuve's blue nose poke around the corner go ahead and pull the fuel so they could keep him in track position Jan Vikas Paul we have the answer for you on that question they did take a short load of fuel when I was calling the pit stop you mentioned that he tried to pull away a little too early I checked with the engineers here and they said they planned on taking a shorter load of fuel that's why they were able to do it in just over 10 seconds well it gave him the lead and uh, created a problem trying to catch for Jack there was another potential problem look at this this was on the lap out of the pits DeFerrin closing on Carlos Guerrero now watch this down to the hairpin watch Guerrero doesn't see him squeezes down the inside realizes the leaders are there and thankfully gives them room we were talking about Villeneuve and, and in terms of what he does and how he approaches now pit stops everything despite the fact that he said it's a routine race for him at the start of the show that's at least what he told me the, the question is doesn't he really have to be careful oh he has to be so careful what Gilles DeFerrin's team did here with that short fuel load has given him a huge advantage because he has track position he can go away from the traffic Villeneuve we saw him very close to DeFerrin for a couple of laps there is no way he was going to take a chance and try and charge down the inside of DeFerrin and get his nose chopped off. He has to think championship. This has been a long haul for Team Green. They have done such a superb job at bringing Jack Villeneuve along, and they hope to be champions at the end of this day. So no contest at the front of the field here at the moment. Villeneuve being very, very careful. This is Fangio, who is driving for Pac West, and he is the replacement for Danny Sullivan this year. Next year, though, we're going to see some very interesting changes in his uh, in his driving career because he will be a full-time IndyCar driver, we understand, with the new Dan Gurney Toyota-powered effort. We'll just ride here a moment because with Fangio's car, you can just kind of peek over that protection on his helmet and take a look at the, uh, at the dash and some of the indicators. Had a great day, you at Mid-Ohio? has tested a load with a Judd engine in preparation for the Toyota Assault next year. We're anticipating a stop by Jack Villeneuve. There he is, Gary. Unscheduled, Paul. Don't know what the problem is. I'm watching with the crew changing all the tires. I don't know if he suspected he cut a tire or what. This is not masked either. They've got a problem trying to get the rears mounted. A championship could be in the balance. You just don't know. Now he's rolling. That was a 20-second stop. Boy, and a lot of checking of suspension parts. You see him down there wiggling all the control arms to be or not to be. Jack Villeneuve needs to finish eighth or better to clinch the championship. And with that stop, he fell back into 11th place. And Al Unser Jr. is to finish third or worse if he's then eliminated from the championship. Right now, he is six, so he moves up while young Jack falls back. Tony Sakali, Jack's engineer, said earlier, anything can happen. He said, Villeneuve, who's running 11th right now, makes very, very few mistakes in racing situations, but they feared a mechanical problem are getting sucked into somebody else's accident. And they have had a mechanical problem. We do not know yet if it's cured because all they did was change tires. Wonder what the report on the radio was. Boy, can you imagine the kind of... Uh reaction that it sent through the pits when he suddenly reported he was coming in. There's Al Unser Jr. Runs sixth. He's chasing Scott Pruitt. That's just ahead of him. And remember, he has to get further forward if he wants to remain alive in this championship. I mentioned Tony Sicali earlier when he began to talk about Al Unser Jr. 
when he thought could he win. Sakali said if Al Unser Jr. qualifies for a race, he's a potential race winner. He is that good in race conditions. And when he smells a possible victory, Al Unser Jr. is so good at making moves in traffic, particularly in braking zones. But Laguna Seca doesn't lend itself to long braking zones, particularly if the tires, if you have to be careful with them. Al Unser Jr. needs second place. Or better yet, first. And he's already pulled his first move. He was one of the first to make the pit stops. Now he's going to see, will the rest of the race begin to fall in line for him? And I'll tell you what, this is developing right here into a battle with great potential. Fourth place, Guzelman, fifth place, Pruitt, and then Al Unser Jr. all lined up together. Gary Gerald? Conflicting reports. Well, now, wait a minute. Barry Green is motioning me back up here. Barry, what was the problem? Actually, a front tire, a puncher in a front tire. He thought it was something in the rear, so found the problem with back in there. Okay, that clarifies the situation because all the concern was at the rear. Jacques on the radio thought something had broken in the rear. They checked it. They couldn't find any problem. Now they've examined the tires. There was a puncture up front. That's why the car wasn't handling. We got a glimpse of Barry Green a little bit earlier. He, of course, is the owner of Team Green, Australian from Perth. One of the great guys in IndyCar racing. A lot of fun to be around. Good sense of humor, like most Australians. One of the great team managers in IndyCar racing has a special discipline about his team. He says he wants his driver at the truck one hour before the start of every official session. He wants all his mechanics in the morning at the same time to start work. And he wants his driver in the car 15 minutes before the start of every session. He said it is a discipline that he believes everybody should adhere to. And who can complain about his success ratio? Look at Christian Fittipaldi gets loose. Well, Jack Villeneuve on the pit out lap fell from 11th down to 13th place. Lined up behind 12th Christian Fittipaldi right now. Bottom of the hill will probably tell this pass. DeFerrin's still the leader. Fabi is second, followed by Tracy Guzelman and Pruitt. As now, Jack Villeneuve must work his way up through the field if he wants to clinch that championship. Look. You know Goodyear Tires. Everybody knows Goodyear Tires. But did you know that Goodyear retailers have lowered prices? An amazing 25% on some of Goodyear's most popular passenger, light truck, and performance tires. It's true. And other sale prices start as low as $19.99. Believe it. Goodyear. We say they're the best tires in the world. And now you can save like never before. See your Goodyear retailer today. Because this sale ends soon. In a sport where nerves are made of steel, it's only natural. The tools are made by craftsmen. 1,600 craftsmen hand tools made in America, guaranteed forever. The only official tools of IndyCar, NASCAR, NHRA, and the new Super Truck Series by Craftsman, only at Sears. Now, an oil made just for your hard-working engine. 4x4 from Quaker State. Off-roading, extreme temperatures, towing and hauling. They all make your light truck or 4x4 work extra hard and could shorten its life. Why settle for a conventional car oil? Get 4x4 from Quaker State. The intelligent oil for hard-working engines. Now, take home a legend. Get an authentic autographed superstar lithograph. A $30 value, just $7.50. See details on cases of 4x4 at your local supplier. Take a look at the front wing on tail Fabi's car. That's one of those rubber pylons. What happened was he went off course, fighting with Paul Tracy going down into the hairpin, turn two. And in doing so, he collected one of those pylons. Now, here it is. Look at him way, way off course. And that was very scary for Teo Fabi. He has no option but to go to the pit lane to have that removed unless it comes off itself, which he hopes it will. It has not yet. So now Guzman surely will be Look at right little, Look at here. Little Al comes climbing into this fight as well. And he gets past Scott Pruitt, round the outside in a daring move, locks up the brakes and pulls it off. And now starts to work on Mauricio Guzman, fourth place. With traffic to the outside, that's Guerrero. Little Al pokes his nose under the rear wing of Mauricio Guzelman. Dangerous position for Little Al, but he cannot expect any help from any competitor. This is unlike any other sport. It's every man for himself. You look after yourself. 
and then the results fall as they may. Allinger Jr. to stay alive in the championship has to finish first or second. Jack Villeneuve eighth or better to clinch the championship. But Lau with that pass of Scott Pruitt is in fifth place. Villeneuve remains out of the top ten. He just moved to twelfth around Christian Fittipaldi on Beacon. Yes, just check with Forsyth Racing in regards to Teo Fabi. They're not going to bring him in. They said the car will be a little bit slower, but if they come in now, they'll lose track position completely. So they're going to leave him out there. Now what led to that, he was screaming on the radio, Teo Fabi was, that he was getting held up by Carlos Guerrero. And I believe that's what led to him getting off course and picking up that cone. Paul? I wonder, though, if the officials will have something to say about that. Does, it shouldn't be a danger. It's something that they use at the edge of the race course anyway. If it's affecting anybody, it's affecting Teo Fabi, and if he seems comfortable with it, then I guess you don't touch it. Yes, indeed, and of course, the man who took the advantage of that was Paul Tracy, who tried to make the outside move off Fabi, eventually did squeeze by on the infield section, and he currently runs second and is chasing down DeFerrin, who moves the marker up a fastest lap because... At 108.1 miles an hour, he is currently the fastest car on the racetrack. Equal to Teo Fabi, who did his time earlier. And very quickly, uh, race control confirms that they're not going to touch that car. Going to leave it out. Ari Leindijk, a spectator, Gary Gerald. He's one of many race drivers that are thinking about 96, not 95 today. He's here. He's a candidate, a leading candidate, we believe, and he feels for the Archiero Wells team. They'll have Toyota with them next year. And Ari says there's a couple of very significant meetings planned within the next week. He's hoping maybe even by the end of next week, he'll learn that he'll get a full-time ride in IndyCar next year with Archiero Wells. And when Ari Leindijk was invited down by awesome Al Arciero to go view that race shop, he said he walked in and he said, whoa, this is a very professional racing team. That was when his interest of it went way up to try and get back to IndyCar racing with that particular team. Well, Ivan Stewart probably can prove that that's one whale of a great race shop. So it's Jill DeFerrin that still leads. Paul Tracy is in second place. And then this wonderful lineup of cars. Bobby Guzman, Unser Jr., Pruitt, Michael Andretti. This is a great fight here. If you look closely at Teo Fabi's car, look at the side pod. The front of the side pod has a new aerodynamic device that has been pioneered by Formula One. See that black billboard on the front? In fact, that was developed by Gentech, which is the aerodynamic company that Benetton used in England. Um, this Forsyth Racing Team have a contract to aerodynamically develop their own Raynard chassis. And that side fence produces more downforce than that carries under attack. Guzman makes the move now on Teo Fabi and picks up third place. So Fabi is certainly suffering aerodynamically somewhat from that cone there. Oh, undoubtedly, that disturbs the airflow under the car. Well, we know that's where most of the downforce is made. Underneath these cars, sucks them down. Now Al Jr. goes down the inside. And Al Jr. has Teo Fabi. So Al Unser Jr. moving up toward the front now. Now to follow up on what Jan Bika said earlier. Now does the team decide that they're losing too much time and too much track position by staying out there? Or will that rubber nose cone wear itself away and fall off Teo Fabi's car? So Al Unser Jr. has moved up to fourth place. Two to go if he wants to remain in the championship. But at the same time, Belnav now runs in 11th place. So he's steadily coming forward. He needs eighth or better. We have mentioned track position so often. When Villeneuve was the leader, it looks nice and easy, looks fast. Now that he's moved back to 11th place, he has to make his way past Christian Fittipaldi. We saw that earlier. He's past Robbie Gordon. But it takes a long time to size up the opposition and make the move only when you're confident. And when you have a championship to think about, you better be very confident before you make the move. Here's Jill DeFerrin. He's first place. He's had the fastest lap of the day at 108.1. And we look back now for second place. It's 11 seconds back. And there he is, Paul Tracy in second. Now we look for Mauricio Guzman to come over the top of the hill. And there's third place for you. And fourth place, Al Unser Jr. comes down the hill, followed by Scott Pruitt. So that's the top of the order as the fight continues here 
And don't forget, you want to see all the race highlights from the week that you would really care about? RPM Tonight with Kenny Maines. Don't miss it right here on ESPN2. Speed Gear presents its latest catalog of officially licensed racing merchandise. Choose from the top names in Formula One and IndyCar, Benetton, Williams Renault, Newman Haas, and Rahal Hogan. Drivers including Senna, Schumacher, and Hill, plus Andretti, Tracy, and Gordon. Speed Gear has everything from t-shirts, hats, and jackets to scale models, videos, and hundreds of accessories. Call 1-800-777-1847 for your free catalog from Speed Gear. What if I pick the wrong college? Derek? What if I can't get into college? What if I don't want to sit through four more years of class? What if they make me take a bunch of classes that I don't need? What if I can't afford five years? What if I can't get a... What if I can't get a job? Tracy? What if there's another way? Call ITT Tech at 1-800-942-0099. sights on the famous 17-mile drive. On one end of the drive is the lodge at Pebble Beach. On the other end is the award-winning Inn at Spanish Bay. When in the area, drivers like Bobby Rahal love to unwind by playing golf at the beautiful Oceanside Links at Spanish Bay. get you away from that quiet and back on course. This was just a few moments ago. Ray Hall commenting on the driving of Carlos Guerrero. Watch this. Now that's, that's not a finable wave, right? No, and it wasn't the first wave either. Villeneuve is in again. Jacques Villeneuve, lap 45 is back in. He was in 15 laps ago. He'd moved up to 10th and gives it away with this stop. Tires once again. I, I didn't see any changes on the car, did you? Would have been at the rear wing if there was. Oh, look at the frustration. Roger Penske calculating. Now, remember what Barry Green said. They found a puncture in the right front the last time. So that poses another question as to what caused him to stop after so few laps this time. He's got a brand new tire on that left front. What a struggle this has become trying to win this championship for Jacques Villeneuve. Gary, Gerald, do you have any idea what's going on in Team Green? Well, yeah, I saw a front tire that they were pushing on clearly way down in pressure. Tony Sicali in disgust, in contempt, actually, pointing to the side of the tire. And I thought I saw a little cut or an abrasion there. And so this team that's hammering for a championship, they don't want this thing to have to wait out an appeal. They want it done today. And they're getting roadblock after roadblock. Let's go to Jan. Well, Gary, on the other end of the championship battle, Al Unser Jr. seems to have things going here his way. The car was a little bit loose and they now have told him to go full stiff on the front sway bar. That will make the car tighten it up somewhat. Also remember, he was one of the first to come in. So Allinger Jr. is not that far away from making his second pit stop, Paul. Allinger Jr., fourth place, 17 laps, 20, excuse me, 22 laps since his last stop. 13, not a lucky number for Jack Belknap. Both times he has come out of the pits with unscheduled stops, he's fallen into 13th place behind Christian Fittipaldi, and he's done that once again. With Gary mentioning that one of Villeneuve's tires has a mark or a nick on the side, that suggests that somewhere along the line, Villeneuve has been hit by a front wing end place. That very easy cuts down these tires, and I don't know who he was trying to pass, but that may be what happened here to Villeneuve. But it's a long uphill battle still, Paul, for Al Jr. He has a long, long way to go yet because Guzman and particularly Paul Tracy will not make his day easy if he has to get into the top two or three positions. Yeah, he's really only moved himself up to the hard part. 
Marco Greco moves offline. Let's Al Unser Jr. and Scott Pruitt through. Don't count out Scott. Once Jr. got past him, Scott's remained right in there. The story today, the continuing battle of tire conservation. You've got to move forward, but at the same time, you've got to save your tires. Teo Fabi finally comes in, gets his uh, unapproved aerodynamic device removed, and a change of tires. So Teo Fabi stopping for his second stop, 17 laps after his last. They finally, I guess, decided it was pushing him back way too far. And that's the tire that came off of Villeneuve's car. And there is a chunk of rubber gone from that tire, but look, they're examining that tire to see, was it punctured, or is there something on his own car that might actually be nicking those front tires? Perhaps his front wheels rub on the wing of his own car for some reason. Well, at least we're not aware of any contact that might have moved a wing around. You can see there on DeFerrin's car, though, how closely some of those components sit. And the tires themselves operating in their dynamic mode will flex back and forth. If it's moving too much and just barely touches apart, Jack could have a serious problem. Gilles de Ferrin's last lap was a 78. Nine seconds off the pace of the pole man, Jack Villeneuve, because he is caught in traffic. And there is our second place man. Watching for third now. Matsushita, John Stone, and there is Guzelman, the third place car. That is a long straight. Then you go all the way back to a battle now. Remember, Al Jr. needs to watch what goes on behind him also. Because to Scott Pruitt, this is a battle for position, remember. Not just Pruitt letting Unser Jr. have his own way here. What a battle these two ways of the Michigan 500 when Pruitt did pull one over Al Jr. at the critical time on that last stop to win his first ever race. So Al Unser Jr.'s team now talking about stopping in six laps on the 54th. We're just completing the 48th. DeFerrin is still the leader. Tracy, you saw the interval, 10 seconds back from DeFerrin, and then eight seconds back from Tracy is Mauricio Guzelman, and then this battle is five seconds further back from Guzelman. Final race of the 1995 PPG IndyCar World Series. Championship still undecided. Could be decided here today, depending on the positioning of Jacques Villeneuve, who got around Christian Fittipaldi and moved into 12th place, but needs to be eighth or better. Al Unser Jr. needs second or first. And if the points sort out in a wrong fashion, wrong from my point of view, then this heads off to an appeals court on September 18th, and the decision could come sometime after that. The appeal, of course, for the disqualification of Al Unser Jr. at Portland. Paul, here's an interesting scenario. Pruitt's all over Al Jr. If he sticks his nose down the, nose down the inside, I'd have to let him go. So 49 laps are now complete. Al Unser Jr. continuing to watch. Scott Pruitt, who runs just behind him. Jill DeFerrin still leads. This is Michael Andretti's IndyCar. You can't get his engine, you can't get his tires, but you can get his motor oil. Texaco Haviland Formula 3. It's formulated to control volatility and fight oil vaporization. It provides complete protection, and it's the exact same Haviland you can buy right off the shelf, which, by the way, is a heck of a lot easier. Add more life to your car, take it to the star. Bernstein's Budweiser King top fuel dragster. Who says you need wings to fly? Whether your car is Strawberry Pearl Coat, Santa Fe Silver, or Candy Apple Red, a PPG certified collision repair shop uses premium paint and a palette of over 100,000 colors to precisely match your car's color. Whether it's champagne metallic, emerald green, or banana yellow, 
PPG Premium Paint, the right match for your car. The boy who was always out of breath, the restless one who was always the last one into class and the first one out, the boy who was always staring into space, is now flying through it. is being brought to you by Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil. Add more life to your car. Take it to the star. By Beachwood Aged Budweiser, the king of beers. This Bud's for you. And by PPG, world leaders in automotive finishes, sponsor of the PPG IndyCar World Series. Scott Pruitt continuing to work on Al Unser Jr. battle for fourth place. Gary Gerald, new information on Jack Villeneuve. Well, new speculation, and the crew is trying to pinpoint it. There is conjecture now that maybe it was a brake scoop on the front of Villeneuve's car that somehow was getting into one of those tires and caused the two punctures. Oh, boy. Then what do you do? You, you take it off and risk overheating that left front brake? Interesting decision. Let's go on board Michael Andretti. Michael is chasing the battle between Pruitt and Anzer, and in fact is part of that fight now. Oh, Michael has an interesting scenario here now because it's every man for himself, and I think he will just go and try and plow his way past Pruitt and get by Al Jr. And if any of those drivers, Pruitt or Michael, sticks their nose in under Al Jr., I can't imagine him doing anything but letting them go because if he takes himself out of this in an incident that's unnecessary then he throws all possibility away yeah, what's michael's hand here what's this well, look how slick it is for everybody look 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 just look at the corrections on michael's car that a car is so loose which actually might tell you about al jr and scott Pruitt must also have bad handling cars because he doesn't catch them that fast al Unser jr up to the top of the hill starts down through the corkscrew jan Vikas. yes and al Unser jr is another one of those cars that is starting to get loose because in two laps he'll be in here in the pits and they're going to take at least one turn out of the front wing to try and balance that car out that may be why Pruitt has been able to close on him paul preparing for Neferon. You saw that they had his sign poured out in the pits, ready for him to make a stop, the leader of the race. And Al Unser Jr. apparently going to stop on the next lap. So we watch for Deferon to hit the pits. Paul Tracy should be in right behind him based on the last set of stops. What's and Michael? Look how slick. I mean, he, he continues to fight it. He's just having a devil of a time handling that car. Well, you can see a driver earning his, earning his money here. That was Al Jr., you know, I think, that locked up that brake on the way down to that turn two, so he is under pressure. Prude will make a move. Jill DeFerrin makes his turn onto the pit road. His pit's pretty quickly there, and here's Gary Gerald. The nose of the car comes in here. The team, the rookie driver that was fastest here during testing back in the month of June. What a weekend he's enjoying. Well, Prapp has said we will not make any changes on the car. Now, Paul Tracy is expected momentarily. He just flies by us into his pit, and they're expecting no changes. Both Tracy and DeFerrin went for the short fill. Here's a 17-second stop, almost 18, for DeFerrin as he's away. DeFerrin takes a very long stop. Mauricio Guzman climbs the hill, and Guzman goes into the lead, but he's not yet stopped. So Guzman picks up the lead from DeFerrin on the stop, and Paul Tracy rolls now. Let's go to Jan. Allinger Jr. has brought it into the Penske pit, and somehow they happen to have the pit, the only one here with shade. So at the moment, Allinger Jr. getting a nice shade here from the bridge. You know, we were looking for that wing change, and I didn't see it. I didn't see him make the change at the front. A nice stop, just over 15 seconds for Allinger Jr. So Al comes back into the fight. Comes Tail Fabi to try and overhaul Al Unser Jr., who rejoins the fight at eight, but looks like he's going to go a position down. And that's Gordon Fernandez all over again, and they make it because Al Jr. doesn't need. He locks it up the right front, needs to keep this car on the road. Brand we new tires. 
We talked earlier about Deferrin's 17 second leisurely stop. He was 14 seconds in the lead over Paul Tracy. So this temporary lead for Mauricio Guzman, I don't think he will threaten Deferrin's lead when Guzman stops. I was going to be interested to see if Guzman stayed out because he crossed the line behind DeFerrin as DeFerrin was coming out of the pits on the last stop. So this is the first lap that he'll be scored in the lead and the first race that he has led since the Michigan 500. Let's go to Gary. Here's some interesting speculation. We mentioned that Tracy and DeFerrin took the short fill on the first stop. Scott Pruitt had problems on the first stop. He's currently running third. He's stretching it. He's going to go two more laps, then he's coming in, and he's going to get a light load. It's going to be about 32 to 33 gallons. They think they can make up a lot of ground since the others had to take the long fill on their last stop. Will Pruitt become a contender? We're going to find out in about two laps. Currently running in third, DeFerrin in second, Pruitt third, and I'm wondering now about Jack Villeneuve. He is now eighth. That's the position he needs. He stopped ten laps ago. Allen Jr. is in tenth. He has a long way to make up, and most of the cars in front of him, save two, save Pruitt and Guzman, have already made their second stop of the day. So it looks like it's tilting once again a little bit toward Jack Villeneuve. And you can see that DeFerrin is brave down that inside move, but you can also see there is lots of tire buildup offline now as this race goes on here. So anybody that wants to move high or forces himself to go high can get in trouble very easy, particularly on the downhill run out of the carousel, out of, out of the uh, corkscrew. Look at Gordon's broken right front wing. Yeah, I think parts of it is laying over on the outside of turn 11. That'll change the handling, though. You know, we have seen races, though, time after time, where drivers, there's, there's the other half of the wing. Uh, time after time where the wing is turned down, the wing is missing, and the lap times don't change appreciably. Mm, I don't think that'll be the case for Robbie Gordon. For some reason, Derek Walker, oh, see that right front? No downforce on the right side of the front of the car. That's why the wheel is lightly loaded. That's why it locks up under braking. But Derek Walker is at pains to understand why on natural road courses, they just simply have not been fast this year. They're fast everywhere else. But he realizes that engineering wise they may a wanker, man. Well, that was an interesting comment by our boy Robbie I don't know, I don't know who he was talking about and Mauricio Guzman comes out of the lead makes his stop Jan? well it has to go oh, for a moment there it didn't come up off the air jacks that's gonna hurt the timing here for fit, this pit stop they got the wheels undone but it took a while to come up they're waiting for the fuel now there was no changes made on the aerodynamics Mauricio Guzman underway well they tried for the short fill but it wasn't a short stop 15.3 seconds for Scott Pruitt I don't know if they had a problem but they were hoping for something better than that they're happy but I think it could have been better so Pruitt and Guzman make their second and theoretically the final stop of the race. Michael Andretti coming down the hill still in pursuit of Al Unser Jr. and just ahead of Teo Fabi. So the second round of stops complete you saw during those stops. To wrap up the championship here. And Alan straightaways. It has a gleaming red finish, durable enough to withstand vigorous bumping. It seats one comfortably. And although this vehicle will never win any speed races, it will help you come out ahead week after week in the checkout lane.
goes by the lofty title, The American Dream. But it's also known as the fixer-upper with one and a half baths. Or the new wagon with room for ten. On occasion, it goes by the name, The Orthodontist Set Braces, or both. So, if you're Bank of America, you stand by to help with the money. No matter what the dream's called. Even when it answers to Jenny, college freshman, class of 2005. Banking on America. Bank of America. Ninth or better for Jack Villeneuve to wrap up the championship. He's 13th. Allinger Jr. is now in a must-win situation. He is in seventh place. And maybe now, finally, Gary Gerald, they have repaired the problem on Villeneuve's car. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of intrigue that surrounds the change. They pulled the old nose off. They immediately covered with a blanket. Billy Camphausen, one of the tech leaders for IndyCar, came over. We got a look at it. We saw some very ragged honeycomb down on the left front side plate of the wing and then one of the crew members threw it under the blanket and literally ran with the wing back toward the transporter so they've got it out of here and the new wing they're hoping will not have any problems cutting down a tire i'm still not i don't know if they're convinced that was the problem but they sure got it out of here in a hurry well as derek has said so many times today he can't take the chance it's that simple jack bilnev 13th you can see tail Fabi got around al Enzer jr jan Bikas. earlier we saw Marco Greco come in with that shredded tire, but up here in Robbie Gordon's pit, you can see that the nose is smashed, the wing is missing. That was the contact that happened between Robbie Gordon and Marco Greco. Simply a case of Gordon working through, Greco not seeing him turning in, and big time contact, as you can see. And so they have now changed it out for a, a, a fresh wing. I assume everything's in good shape on the new nose. Bill Neff, 13. All 26 cars that started this race are still running. We're 60 laps into the run, 24 laps to go in the season. Including Brian Herter, so maybe Chip Ganassi now knows what that gremlin was, and it will be fixed for next, for next year. Bill Nev, 13th place, needs ninth or better. Ahead of him, Johnstone, Rivero, and Fernandez. Let's go back to Fangio. Take a look at his onboard camera. As he comes, I was hoping to get to you a little, a little faster than that so you can see him dive down the carousel, but maybe we can stay an entire lap. Originally, Danny Sullivan had hoped to get back into this Bank of America car for this last race at Laguna, but that was a bit ambitious with the broken pelvis. to see everything that Fangio learned because it is a learning curve during his first, of course it is his rookie IndyCar season, although he doesn't run many races. Balancing the car through the corners with the throttle is the whole key to the overall lap here. One fast corner is no good. As we watch Fangio, Gary Gerald, an update on Villeneuve. Well, Barry Green talking to his driver, and the veteran Green trying to keep his driver right in step. He says, we're P13 now. Partner Johnstone is next. P9 is all we need. Just stay focused. They just keep talking him around it. They don't want him to get frustrated over this turn of events with the cut tires. Ninth place is what he needs now. Allen Jr. needs to win. The bonus point beginning to make a difference here. DeFerrin still the leader. And look at those chunks of rubber beginning to get kicked up on the side of the racetrack. As you go down through from the carousel, down through turn nine in particular, the next corner, the left-hander they're going to go to now, you can clearly see the marbles on the outside of the racing line. There they are right there. Huge buildup of rubber. And inside. And inside also. Venture out there. We continue to watch little Al. He closes once again on tail Fabian. When he came in for that pit stop, he was very happy with the handling of the car. He has slipped back in position, not because there's any problem with the car, but just by virtue of the timing of that pit stop. So he has the potential of getting back to those positions he had earlier, but at the moment, a lot of traffic to work through, Paul. Right behind there is Bobby Rahal. Every winner at Laguna Seca started from the front row but one, and that was Ray Hall in 87 when he started third. DeFerrin started third today. Fastest lap of the race by Jill DeFerrin. 
came on lap seven, chasing Jack Villeneuve, 108.1 miles an hour. The EDS scoring system flashing all these facts to us. Really, we're talking multiple systems that EDS supplies. We watch and have everything controlled off of a, uh, a system provided specifically for television. The media has another system, and then there's an absolute fail-safe system that works for the officials of the race. So should we lose what we have, they still readily score the race all electronically, all by computer. It's really marvelous. Vassar, whose car does not like the sunshine. As soon as the sun comes out, this car becomes a bit of a handful. This is a fight for position, though, behind Bobby Rahal. Interesting, when it was cool, Jimmy Vassar had the fastest car here on the morning warm of this morning and yesterday morning, Saturday. 62 laps complete, 84 the scheduled distance. It's still DeFerrin leading Paul Tracy and Jack Villeneuve and Alan for Jr. battle. Onward and upward, the awards. The honors, the accolades for the Toyota Camry continue to rise. Driven by a powerful V6 engine, precision crafted to the highest standards, Camry has risen to become the gold standard. While its starting price hasn't risen at all, introducing the 1995 Toyota Camry, newly styled, refined, and headed for even greater heights. There's a fine line of motor oil separating your car's engine parts that's as little as a thousandth of an inch. But friction and heat can make motor oil become volatile and vaporize, weakening its ability to protect expensive parts. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility, fight vaporization, and provide complete engine protection, no matter what you drive. Add more life to your car. Take it to the stars. I really get a pump jumping out of balloons with bungee cords on or riding a motorcycle at 100 miles an hour with my head tucked over the handlebars not being able to see anything. That is definitely an adrenaline high. Knowing that your life hangs this far between life and death. You know, you get those endorphins popping, that, that incredible feeling, that rush. I kind of like being on stage. It's definitely escapism. I never really have experienced true zen, but I'm hoping me and my Ducati will get there. ESPN2, people who do. ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, 8 o'clock Eastern. Baseball's most storied rivalry continues. The Red Sox and the Yankees do battle. Andre Ribeiro's car by the edge of the course. You can see Andre standing up behind the wall. And how did he get here? Well, obviously he drove. He was running just in front of Jack Villeneuve. That's Brian Herta. Whoa! Now, that could have been very nasty. I'm not sure Brian Herta saw Ribeiro trying to go down the outside, but that was a wild ride to the concrete first and to the tires. And this that fact is the chassis that Scott Goodyear drove at the Indy 500. Now watch. Just slow the camera here. Just slow down. And just go a little bit more. Watch how high this car gets. Look at this, look at this, all four wheels virtually off the ground. And the leading car, Gilles de Ferran, gets a grandstand view and thankfully goes down the inside and misses everything. I'll tell you what, that is the one kind of contact you don't want to have. You get that right front in between those two wheels, that's what will launch it, and that, that may be just a small launch. Interlocking wheels and open wheel racing cars is potentially the most dangerous accident you can have. Remember, that was at about 80 miles an hour in the braking zone. So sitting against the wall here in the last race of the season, the car, but for a black flag, might have won the Indianapolis 500. DeFerrin avoids it and leads. We're moving into the colony. This is everything we've dreamed about. They're exactly the kind of people I want here at the colony. There are lots of skeletons under these gilded streets. What kind of stuff are you teaching these kids? The phone just went dead. I locked in. Mom, I'm scared. John Ritter, Mary Page Keller, Hal Linden, a USA Pictures original, The Colony, your home for life. 
Lancaster Flooring has some hot deals to go along with the hot weather. Head to Lancaster Flooring and see what the summer clearance sale is all about. Everything is priced to sell. Indoor, outdoor carpets as low as $2.99 a square yard. High lows as low as $4.99 and plushes as low as $6.99 a square yard. You can save today and install tomorrow. Get immediate installation on hundreds of rolls of carpet in stock. The deals are hot, but you'll stay cool with a fresh new look from Lancaster Flooring. Lancaster Flooring, where the greatest discounts are found. yellow now for Andre Ribeiro's uh, confrontation with the wall after bouncing off of Herta. And during this yellow, Teo Fabi came into the pits, was unscheduled, and so Teo Fabi running the risk now of losing his track position. Jimmy Vassar has proven this season that a cool, non-complicated outlook can be easily mixed with his professional life and produce winning results. We've had a great season this year uh, with all the podium finishes, um, doing so well, made a big jump uh, for my career. You know, we've been so focused and working so hard this year. It's the time away that, uh, that I really enjoy spending time with my friends. You know, I remember it just like it was yesterday. I don't know where to begin. I was looking for that one unusual piece. I'm gonna rip. I'm gonna have to take a pass on this one at 225. Cut. You know, you gotta do something athletic now and then. Lack of racing testing, I have to get my practice here at the bumper cars. One of my favorite places to go is the Baja Cantina. My friend owns it. He hangs my pictures and gives me free food. As you can see, we're all aspiring musicians at heart. Jimmy, wake up, wake up! Jimmy Vassar lined up eighth position. The PPG pace car, Johnny Rutherford at the wheel, leads the field around. See Jack Villeneuve in there, fourth back in the order. He is actually right now in, uh, I've lost him on the board. Jack Villeneuve sits in 11th position on the course itself. So he has some work to do to get up to position, but a harder battle waits for Al Unser Jr. 66 laps are complete here at Laguna Seca Raceway. America's always been a country of inventors, a nation of relentless tinkerers, a land of improvisation. Businesses start in garages, hobbies turn into industries, and if you're Bank of America, you hold up your end of the job by making sure every business service is in place for when the next brainstorm hits in the middle of the night. Banking on America. Bank of America. I get here early to stock up on Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil because it gives my engine complete protection. Me too. Michael Andretti. Texaco Haviland Formula 3 is formulated to control volatility and fight vaporization. And it's the same oil used by championship racing teams. Empty. Tough track, huh? Take it to the star. Get a Major League Baseball team cap when you buy a case of Haviland Formula 3. Don't forget Thursday, ESPN College Football. The Kansas Jayhawks battle the Texas Christian Horn Frogs live on ESPN.
ESPN. All right, we're under a full course caution. While they get Andre Ribeiro's car off of the race course, the position was precarious. If someone else came off and tagged it, could create a bad situation, some injury, so they want to get it off the race course. The actual order, DeFerrin, Tracy, Guzman, Pruitt, Michael Andretti, the top five. Al Unser Jr. is sixth. Bobby Rahal, seventh, and Vassar, Teo Fabi, Adrian Fernandez, Jack Villeneuve, he sits there in 11th. The championship is simple. It's a must win for Al Unser Jr. Jan Bikas? Paul, Roger Penske knows, of course, that is the case. And he's pulling out all the stops. On this restart, Emerson Fittipaldi is right ahead of Al Unser Jr. Obviously, there's been some communications between the two. Emerson will move out of the way. But then his job is to try and hold up Bobby Rahal, who sits behind. They know they have to go for it, and they're ready. They've been saving fuel during this caution. They'll turn it up when they get a chance, Paul. So the season comes down quite simply here in the final laps to a charge through the field by Al Unser Jr. Derek, is he up to it? He is up to it, but is the car, will it allow him to make that type of charge? From what we have seen this afternoon, he doesn't have the outright speed to get himself to the front by passing the cars ahead of him. So it will be an uphill battle. And but we don't want to take anything away from DeFerrin who was so close to a victory at Cleveland and may be on his way to his first IndyCar victory as he leads the field back toward the green flag. And look at Jack Villeneuve as he slides across in front of Paul Tracy. And remember, Villeneuve got the bad break with the pace car because if DeFerrin had been behind Villeneuve when that yellow came out, he would have made up a whole lap and would have made his job a lot easier again only if Alonso Jr. wins the race will he need all those precious positions. So back to green flag you wrote for a moment there with second place Paul Tracy who sits just behind Jack Villeneuve who is a lap down. The Perrin is able to ease away. Oh, more than ease away. Uh, DeFerrin is in control here. Unless he has mechanical failures, he looks as he, ha he has the potential to cover everybody and maybe extend their tremendous record that IndyCar has this year. Oh, look at Michael Andretti alongside of Scott Pruitt. They go through this corner side by side, pushes Pruitt off. That can be a very dangerous corner to run off the right side. Pruitt keeps it under control. They climb the hill. Now will Pruitt be able to challenge? He's got Marco Greco between him now, or just in front of Michael. And Greco pulls offline. They both come screaming down the hill. And that was a case of who was going to blink. Unfortunately for Scott Pruitt, Michael had that inside line, which is a harder turn to make. But Scott Pruitt rode him all the way, and he was lucky that he didn't get all four wheels off the racetrack. That was a very scary move. And Al Jr. squeaked past Emerson Fittipaldi. So Al Unser Jr., sixth place, still trying to come forward. There comes Sam Pedri. The problem Al Jr. has now is how hard is too hard? You have to make up your own mind inside your helmet. How risky can I begin to make these moves? But quite frankly, with so few laps, only 14 laps left, I think somebody like Al Unser Jr., now has to throw caution to the wind and he has to get aggressive and take gambles because if he doesn't, he's not going to win this. What was that? Another car off on the left side of the race course. Was that Christian? Yes, Christian Fittipaldi. Remember, he moves to Newman Haas next year. Boy, talk about losing track position now. On board now, Fangio as Michael Andretti comes down the hill in fourth place. Michael and Peter Gibbons have been in deep in thought all weekend here trying to work out a compromise handling package for Michael. But you can see Michael's car move around so much and he slides down the inside and Fangio gives him just enough room. Just ahead, the 14 car, Ekblom. Interesting story on, on his arriving in A.J. Foyt's car. On his way to be married in Hawaii. Just happened to be convenient passing through Monterey. Sounds like good credentials to get a drive to me. And a lot fact, of people getting married. Yeah, the season's over. We're going to have her to get married. Brian Hurd gets married next week. He then has a funny moon in Greece. Then he goes back to Indianapolis to have some of the hardware taken from his leg. And in fact, his team owner, Chip Ganassi, will hear the wedding bells next week.
Beckham doing? Who's he now, waving? What was that gesture? Just a tearaway going on? Yeah, I think yeah. it was, yeah. And the reason Nobody looks to like wave a wave there. Yeah, the reason it looks like a wave is he's doing 150 miles an hour. As soon as he sticks his hand out of the cockpit, the wind just drags his hand back. So much dust and sand flies here when cars go offline. When you follow cars for long periods, you get oil smears on your visor. Then the dust and dirt sticks to it. Then you take the rip off off and you got a nice clear windscreen again. Answer Jr. is in sixth place. He needs first. The focus of the fight now. There is a presumption that the PPG Cup is moving closer and closer to the pit of Jack Villeneuve and will be awarded to him here as the youngest ever champion in the Indy cars. So the focus now will move to the battle at the front of the field. Guzelman is in third place. Paul Tracy is in second. And Jill DeFerrin is 12 laps away from his first Indy car win. And of course, you are talking irrespective of what happens in the appeal. Even if they got all their points back from Portland, it won't make any difference. Look at the traffic jam here. Yeah, it's much simpler now. Al Unser needs to win. And Vassar and Rahal, that is a position battle there. Seventh is Rahal. Jimmy Vassar is eighth. So this is a good fight here. There comes little Al down the hill. There's Vassar and Rahal. Johansson is struggling. He's in the mix there. He's a lap down in 14th. Ray Hall, we saw him wave his fist earlier. He jer jerks to the inside, doesn't get by Eggbloom. Vassar. Vassar continues in pursuit. Tries the inside. Gordon's right there as well. Ray Hall all the way, though. Oh, look at, look at the breaking. Whoa. As Gordon tucks around. Vassar locks up the left front. Vassar trying to get by Ray Hall. Good race here. Good battle here for these positions. Points all the way down to 12. Gordon, while he's physically present, is not actually into the fight. He's had one very tough day. Having to replace a nose after contact. Fell out on the first lap, slid off the course, got back on. He's way, way down in the order. Now there's the sand. You saw Rahal go wide. You saw the sand get squirreled in behind the tires of Rahal's car, and Vassar has to run over that. That is one of the difficulties here. In fact, part of those million-dollar-plus development that Laguna Seca will go through next year is, in fact, to put curbing, exiting curbing, on the outside of most of these corners. Bobby Rahal, every race he has finished. He's been in the top ten except one. He was 13th at Milwaukee. Don't know yet whether he will have a one or a two-car team next year. He wants to keep a two-car team. They hope to stay together with Raul Bozell, although the partnership of Carl Hogan and Bobby Rahal will be over and done with after in about, what, ten more laps. And some indication that Carl Hogan then joins, in some way or another, forces with Roger Penske. There's that dust again. You see that gets... Swirled up by Reha, watch he goes close to the curb again. As soon as you get outside that white line, that's when you begin to suck the sand onto the racing line. Bobby Reha continues in seventh place. 74 laps are complete. Al Unser Jr. is sixth, needs a win. Jill DeFerrin may be scoring his first. of the world's most powerful horses together, and what do you get? You get out of the way. The Budweiser Ken Schrader stock car. See you at the races. With new spark plugs, you get improved performance for a while. But only Bosch Platinum has a pure platinum center electrode that's heat-fused for an airtight seal. So Bosch Platinum reaches its self-cleaning temperature faster for full engine power over a longer performance life. Which means you'll replace a lot of other things before you change your Bosch Platinums. Bosch Platinum, the ultimate spark plug. 
its idealized engineering to its sculpted aerodynamics, Celica has been designed to be as beautiful to drive as it is to look at. The 1995 Toyota Celica, including the all-new convertible. What else would you expect from a company that approaches manufacturing as an art? on a very, very slick course here in the closing laps. And he has been loose most of the last lap. In fact, everybody is fighting this very slick course. But at the moment, Brian Herta, Vassar's teammate, is with Gary Gerald. Well, we said at the top of this show that this team has had such strange luck. Brian Herta, you had a steering wheel break. Yeah, you know, it's just, it's just one of those terrible days, you know. We started off you know, we took on the development engine program with Ford this year, and, you know, we just had a lot of problems, and yeah, as, a, as an engine, it took me out at the beginning. It cost us a bunch of laps, and, you know, from that point, I got together with Andre Ribeiro, and, uh, you know, I never saw him coming, and then the steering wheel broke on the car. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, just a terrible day for the Target Scotch cars. Uh, you know, so much promise, and yet, uh, you know, we got nothing to go home with. He starts with a clean slate. Next weekend, you get married. Best wishes for that, at least, and good luck in 96. Thank you. wonder if now we've heard two comments that telegraph that maybe they're not going to be a Ford team in the future. I don't know, but with the uh, emotion in his voice, I would suggest he just grabs Jeanette and go sit on the beach in Greece and enjoy yourself and just look forward to a much more productive next year because Brian Herta has all the speed and the technical ability that he needs to be a winner. He's already been on the pole, but he hasn't quite won yet. Physically on the racetrack, just behind Jimmy Vassar is Robbie Gordon. As we watch Al Unser Jr. move on Scott Pruitt, tries to get him, can't get it done. Pruitt comes across. It's not over yet. Maintains the line, but look at him coming off the corner. Oh, there's one of the moves we talked about earlier. How brave can you be down the inside? Road Pruitt all the way, and of course Pruitt then locked up the brakes and kept the position. This is a day that these two are going to talk about later. Let's go to Gary Gerald. Well, just to follow up on your comment about 96 and what would be the power plant of choice for Chip Ganassi, I just put the question to him a moment ago. He said, well, I have no comment. <laughs> so Pruitt still in front a little Al. Because one of the changes we thought might be made was that the Newman Haas team would go with Honda power plants. But in fact, along with Christian Fittipaldi's announcement this weekend, they also announced, in fact, they will have Ford power next season for Michael and Christian. Scott Pruitt heading for turn 10. Again, over a million dollars in improvements coming to just this section of the race course next year. Lengthen out the pit, change the position of turn 11. I'll tell you what, folks up here, you know, and, and much of what happens at this race all goes to charity. It's such a great event and a good way to end the season. I just heard something misfire. I don't know what it was. I don't know whether it was Scott Pruitt. It was, it was as, as Scott Pruitt went by one of our camera positions. It doesn't look as if he's any trouble here, but... This team, led by Jim McGee, I think Paul is fair to say, has more fun than anybody else. They have such a relaxed style and outlook about this team. They believe so much in Scott Pruitt, particularly as a test driver. And he's so good in racing situations. It's great to see that he did get his first win. And their test program starts immediately after this race finishes. I'll tell you something else. Scott, like so many others here, it's a big family deal for him. His family is always at all the racetracks. You see his mom all the time. But that's true of everybody. Al Unser Jr. actually camps at most of the racetracks. to go in the season. By the way, congratulations to the Daly family. Beth Daly, going to be the Rookie of the Year in... In uh, the Pro Women's Division of the IJSBA Pro National Jet Ski Tour. Glad you remember. You prompted me to say it. I had to go <laughs> through it. <laughs> congratulations. You hear that misfire again? Yeah. There's something misfiring as Scott Pruitt goes under our camera position. He cracks the throttle just over the top of the hill. We're talking about Robbie Gordon. I just want to wrap that up. Robbie Gordon, when he finishes here today, there's a helicopter racing. And he's waiting because he's going off-road racing. Yet today. Still to 
Farron climbs the hill, the leader of the race. They As deserve a win. Absolutely, they do. That team has done a good job. They have shown so much speed. Jill DeFerrin almost won the European 3000 Championship last year. Has already had a test in a Formula One car with Frank Williams. Unfortunately, David Coulthard tested the following week, and he got the drive. But Jill DeFerrin has shown such a turn of speed, and they will move to the Honda engine power plant for next season. And there's second place Paul Tracy, eight seconds back from DeFerrin. Just ahead of him is Villeneuve on his way to a championship. Guzelman and Andretti. This could develop into a battle for third pretty quickly. Four laps to go in the PPG IndyCar World Series for 1995. Season fires up again with the first race at Miami next year. New track. From what we've seen of that track that Ralph Sanchez is putting together, it's going to be spectacular. Multi-purpose facility out at Homestead. Winter test program down there for five days in January. It will be spectacular. Oh, look at Tracy. That has been the rule of thumb here. When cars begin to get away from you, you know the tires are going off. Michael and Chase. We're going to hear, I'm sure. Boy, that's the slickest I've ever run on. And right now, unless there's an awful big crash or an awful lot of very fast racing cars dropping out with mechanical failure, Barry Green can begin to lick his lips and taste that champagne because he is so close now to taking that championship home. Yeah, but I'm willing to bet that he's not doing it yet. He's so well, careful. He wants to see the flag. He wants to know it's over. There's DeFerrin. As he comes off of the second turn, goes into three. That's what eight seconds of a lead looks like at Laguna Seca. Remember, though, he is in such control here. He doesn't need to go over the limit. Just nice and consistent. He lost his first race win with precious laps to go at Cleveland when he tripped over a back marker. Car owner Jim Hall, they move over to Honda next year. I asked Jim, does he still get the same kick out of racing now when he can't be quite as inventive as he was in years past? Remember the Chaparral, the high wing, the sucker vacuum car, sports car, yep. the Jackie Stewart drove, never won a race, but it was spectacular. He said he still gets a kick from racing and winning at the front, even though IndyCar racing is controlled and regulated so much more than racing in the past was, and not allowing people like Jim Hall to be as inventive as he likes to be. Well, even with even with that car, the the one the soccer car, Jackie Stewart, they outlawed it so quick that he. Uh, that gives up. you an idea how the potential of that that, that car has. Here comes Michael now closing down on Guzelman as this battle heats up. Battle for third. Let's listen to Michael play with the throttle. See, he gets loose, corrects it. Is he loose here? Yes, he is. Middle correction. Higher speed. Through there. This is the hard one. Turn five up the hill. Watch the steering wheel. Turns in. No, reasonably good there. Of course, remember, he can control the oversteer with the amount of power he puts on. You can drive with the front wheels, and you can also drive with the back wheels, depending on the power you put on. Oh, look at this. This, this driver can win this race as he takes the white flag. He will also win Rookie of the Year by a single point. How great is that? So DeFerrin starts his final lap. Jill DeFerrin, who was close to victory, as Derek suggested at Cleveland. Jim Hall, his owner, looking for a victory here today. Paul Tracy, nine seconds back in seven. Jim smiled just a little bit. And of course, we documented a great race at Vancouver when he almost missed it. They virtually rebuilt their spare car while Valvoline fueled all the racing cars for the restart, gave him an opportunity, finished second. What a way to finish the season. 
What a way to finish the season for Jim Hall. And few people will argue that they deserve this win. We're going to have five first-time winners. Isn't that great? Five first-time winners. Has never been better IndyCar racing than it has been this year. The final lap of the PPG IndyCar World Series, and it's going to supply us with a brand-new winner in the person of Gil DeFerrin. Fifth first-time ever winner this year. Tenth different driver to win a race this year. That's a record. And the first win for Jim Hall since 1991. As the checkered flag is unfurled, he acknowledges the flag, comes under the Toyota Bridge, and Jill DeFerrin has won it. But now Michael Andretti tries to make a move in the last corner. On Guzelman, he can't get it done. Tracy finishes second. Guzelman third. Michael Andretti fourth. Scott Pruitt fifth. Alonzer Jr. will come across the line in sixth place, and Jack Villeneuve will take the championship, Gary. I'll tell you what, I don't know how you ever, ever get used to this feeling that Jim Hall has right now. First time since the spring of 91. What a way to cap the season. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty exciting. We've been working hard to do it, and we got a good team together, and they finally put it together. We knew we could do it this year, but it took, took, a, took a long time, and uh, we're pleased. That's a great way to finish the season. Spectacular as they got second last week. They win it here. Let's go to Jan. Well, with even greater emotions, I'm sure, is Barry Green. How are your nerves there? Congratulations on the championship. Thanks, John. What a great day. I mean, you know, a bit worried there for a while. It wasn't a normal day at the office for us. Junior was, Junior was mounting his, uh, his attack through the field, and, uh, you know, we were going backwards there for a while, but uh, we had two punctures and knocked the front wing off and hit some debris on the racetrack. But, I mean, just we soldiered on. The guys did a great job, still finished 11th, and... Uh, got the championship just feels fantastic got to thank all my sponsors flyers and Klein tools and Ray best just all for all their support and great team effort on team green's part I mean I just love them all well judging by your hat you guys had a lot of confidence coming in already there 1995 IndyCar champion congratulations thanks a lot John it feels damn good I tell you thank you I want one of those team green the 1995 IndyCar champion caps they've held them on now for three races and finally the dream comes true a Canadian the youngest ever to win an IndyCar championship Jack Villeneuve has taken the win in the IndyCar series we'll be back to talk with them this is the Texaco Haviland stock car and this is the Texaco Haviland IndyCar and while these cars run on special fuels, we figured it was still a good way to remind you that Texaco Clean System 3 gasolines give your car unsurpassed performance. And Texaco Haviland Formula 3 motor oil and Texaco antifreeze coolant provide complete protection. But if we really wanted you to remember our name, maybe we should have sponsored something slower. Filtered Miller Genuine Draft. The cold one. Here's the payoff. You know the beer. You know the taste. With Miller Genuine Draft, the world's a very cool place. So many times we talk about magic moments in sports. We're so happy to be a part of one right now as this rookie driver from Brazil peels off the helmet, pulls the earplugs out, and he savors a victory. The tenth different winner in a record-breaking season for competitiveness. Jill DeFerrin, his wife, Angela, had just arrived. A victory kiss. Their little daughter is here. Oh, my, what a moment. And the little girl is so frightened. She said, Daddy, what's going on down here? That's Anna, who's got the hat on. And Gilles, he wants quiet from the crowd here. Isn't this beautiful? What a moment. He's comforting his daughter. Tell us about the emotions that you're feeling right now. It was great emotion, you know. Oh, the crew did such a fantastic job. We came very close all year. And this is just great. <laughs> I mean, I can't express myself better. 
she's fascinated by this microphone. Last week, you had to come through adversity with a backup car at the last minute to finish second. Now you get the win. Did you ever think that you could cap off a rookie season as you have done in an eight-day span? Well, I don't know. I just tried my best, and the team did such a great job. I mean, this weekend, we had everybody covered. It was, it was really good. I mean, it was a reward for the whole season's work. I'm just very pleased. The Pennzoil team is just the best, and I'll be here next year. You are now the rookie of the year in this most competitive series. What do you think that'll mean to your countrymen in Brazil? Uh, that means a lot to me, for sure. And I think it will mean a lot to all the fans, both here and, and back in Brazil. This is a great